Someone wrote to me and said, Pastor Bob, what do you think about tattoos? And would you ever get one? And I realized that I've been wearing my flannel shirts all winter long. It's warmer now. I don't need to wear them. And, well, yes, I, I might get one. <laughs> Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Copy Break. I love our mug of the month this month. Run, those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They'll mount up on wings like eagles. Run and not grow weary. Walk and not be faint. And that's a t-shirt as well, as you know. Drinking some Headbangers Brew in my mug. And uh, this is decaf. We have whole bean, ground, K-cups, the whole thing. And here's the exciting thing I want to announce today. From now on, every time you order coffee, you get the free poster with it as well. This will automatically come, the poster of the month will automatically come with the coffee. How cool is that? Anyway, all of that available right here. We are metal, we are family dot com. Dear Pastor Bob, I have attended some church services where people are watching me the whole time. If I am not lifting my hands during the worship music, they will signal me to raise my hands. And if I don't raise my hands, they look at me in shame. Or if I'm not singing, they will try to get me to do that. Have you ever experienced anything like this? And what does the Bible say about this? Can a believer truly worship God if he def doesn't lift his hands in worship? Institutional church, and it's in a lot of, you know, people say, well, I'm not institutional, I'm charismatic. You know, we believe in free worship, and we raise our hands, and we sing, and we, yeah. And they just have a different form of legalism. Is that necessary when you're worshiping? Is it wrong? No. Is it right? The Bible talks about it. Is it necessary? That's the question. Let's turn today to John chapter 4 and verse 24. You know, I was raised in a, in a very conservative little country church. If someone would have raised their hands in worship in my church, it would have been very strange. Or somebody would have clapped in the church. Even after special music, sometimes people clap. Well, in some churches, oh, that never would have happened. Or somebody, you know, when the preacher is talking or somebody's talking, if somebody would have said amen, oh my goodness. You just sat in church and you you were quiet. Yeah. And I played the piano for church, and my mom played the organ. And, um, you know, sometimes I'd play it a little bit too rockin', and of course that wasn't the way to do it either. There's a certain style that you need to do when you're playing in church. You gotta tone it down a little bit, even if it's an exciting song. Well, here's the scripture. God is spirit, a spiritual being. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth or in reality. So how do you worship God in spirit and in reality? Well, it's another way of saying, let's get real with our worship. And what is getting real with, the, with your worship? Being mechanical and your hands automatically go up because that's what you're supposed to do? Or is it resulting, is it a result of, of what's going on inside of you? Those who worship him must worship him in spirit. Now, when we say worship, it's a little broader sense. It doesn't just mean in a worship service. It means all of our adoration, all of our thanksgiving to God, all of our worship, singing or not is spirit and 
reality, let's make it real. But let's talk about specifically in a worship service. Spirit and truth. The Bible talks about my spirit, spirit um, joins with his spirit. And the Bible talks about spirit because the Holy Spirit, his spirit, lives inside. And when the Holy Spirit begins to worship and my spirit begins to worship, it's a, a spiritual unity in worship, in spirit of God, who is spiritual. Did I say that right? <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? So when we worship, the first thing we do is we worship from our spirit, from his spirit deep inside of us, our innermost being. And that creates a reality. The reality is that I am no longer mine. I am bought with the price I belong to him. I've given myself to him. And the exciting part is that he lives in me. The Bible says the life I live in the body, I live by faith in God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's who I am. That's my essence. So when I worship, it's not about external things. It's not about hands. And if that helps you to worship in spirit and reality, then raise your hands. If it doesn't, don't. It isn't a show. It isn't something we necessarily do to impress each other or because we're supposed to. It's something that happens from your innermost being and it's connecting with God. John 4, 24, great scripture. God is a spiritual being, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in reality, truth. I hope that helps you. And folks, worship is a wonderful thing. And uh, at some point every morning, I turn on some worship music and spend a little time with God, and it's usually followed by the Beatles. Just saying. <laughs> Folks, don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.